evening. I'd like to call the regular Berlin Select Board to order, meeting to order, uh, for Monday, August 15th, 2022. With us is, uh, to my left, is Kyle Patton and Dave Sawyer. To my right is Flo Smith, Joe Staub. Also with us is Vince Conti, the town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? I do have a couple. Uh, we've asked to uh, provide a letter of support for the Midway Avenue solar project. There is a copy of the letter in your packets um, to review. And also, uh, when we come to the round table, there's a couple of things to discuss. But also, we got a request from the Planning Commission to set up a special meeting. They'd like a special meeting with the board um, to review uh, some proposals for the branding of the new town center. Gotcha. And hello? Yes. Um, yes. Um, my name is Meredith Dodge. And I don't know if this is an item that we would like to address during the round table, um, but I am the treasurer for the Berlin Historical Society and would like to, to address um, the office access um, to the society. Okay. I just recently uh, got noticed about the situation, so I apologize, but I did send an email um, so if we could address that tonight, that would be great. You would have just gotten the email. Um, well, uh, why don't we put that in public comment and uh, you can uh, start now. Okay. Um, and if you'd like, I can read the email since you likely have not had a chance to see it yet. Sure. Okay. Um, Unexpectedly, we found the interior door that provides access from and to the office space for the Berlin Historical Society has been changed sometime recently, I guess in the July, August timeframe. Um, but this was done without um, our knowledge or consultation with us. And so it has created some significant ingress and egress issues. Um, the egress issues are that we no longer have direct access to the common areas of the building, the restrooms and water facilities, and a display case belonging to the society from our private office space. And our membership often utilizes this office space outside of town hall business hours. So this creates a big issue for us. It is understood that office space needs to have access to restrooms and water. The ingress issues, uh, we no longer have the ability to control access to the office space of the historical society from the common areas of the building. The door change allows anyone to enter the, our office without permission and or our knowledge. Uh, the Berlin Historical Society, we have many valuable and irreplaceable items in the space, um, as well as uh, valuable office equipment. So we have an obligation to safeguard these possessions of the society and uh, not being able to lock the office is a particular concern to us. Um, so we'd like to request that the door not be returned to its original configuration so that we can access the office. Um, we have access from the office to the common areas and provide the secure access method from the common areas to the private office space um, and we look forward to a you know, resolution of this matter um, so that we can ensure the safety of our members and of our historical items. Uh, you know, I just, you know, like to reiterate, we, we strive to preserve and share the history of Berlin for the benefit of all in the town. And um, we appreciate the support of the town, you know, in uh, achieving, you know, what we try and do to maintain and preserve the history. Okay. Um, on this, um, this was not on the agenda, so um, we can uh, 
put it on the agenda for next time around, Vince? Yeah, I'll have it on the agenda. Okay. Well, we do have concerns because uh, I guess that wouldn't be until September. And that leaves us with uh, not being able to safeguard the office between now and then. So I guess that would be a little bit of a concern if we wait to address this until the next meeting. Gotcha. Well, what's the board's feelings on this? I could put something temporarily in place for that for that door until we discuss it further. What what would that what would that mean? I I can have the door locked from this side, so there's no access into that building, into that room. What about? I mean, can you temporarily put it back until we can the way it was? and so that we can address the matter since it was changed without our knowledge. Okay. Yep. So we can just or put so it back to the original configuration and then we can address any reasons why the town thinks there should be a change. Yep. Okay. Can you get that done this week, Vince? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? No, thank you very much. Yep. Um, Okay, the site visit, uh, let's see here. Um, Capital City Grange, just, uh, decision on tax exemption. Tim? Yes, yes, I'm here, thank you. So, um, uh, I was invited to the select board meeting after uh, I raised a question because uh, we, were, we were very surprised to receive a tax bill since the town meeting the ballot vote this year had uh, passed the resolution that we submitted uh, saying that we were requesting full property tax exemption. Uh, we've received the tax bill and uh, it, the town is taxing us for the education portion of the tax. And we wanted to find out why this was change was made from the, what we thought was pretty clear wording in the, uh, the article that we submitted. I was told this was a select board decision, so I want to come to you folks. Um, how does that work, Diane? Well, at the meeting, um, at the when we do the town meeting, you know, it was, it was a ballot item on there, and he's saying that it, you know it was for full. I you know I don't know. I went through it afterwards. You know before we did, okay. before we did the taxes, I went with the assessors and I said, okay, here's the minutes for that meeting. We brought the town clerk in and uh, and the town administrator said, now how am I understanding this? Am I understanding it correctly? You know, are we supposed to you know all of it or just the municipal portion? And it was consensus of the town administrator and the town clerk that it was just the town portion. And it's kind of my understanding too, but I wanted to be certain that, that was the case. So we build them for the school portion, and so they came back and said, "Well, we thought it was for all." So I guess we need to clarify that because I'm. You know, well, can we even them. abate the the school tax part of it? I don't know. That's uh, my understanding. Just that. Uh, on that note, I, I did get this from uh, Barb Schlesinger uh, today, actually, <laughs> and she's the uh, works in the Vermont Department of Taxes. And it's, and it's highlighted that uh, we can abate it, basically, in summary, what it says, but then it has to be redistributed, made up. We still have to through pay the rest of the town. the rest of the town. Right. Missing somewhere. Yes, which, which we understand. Yes. So is that similar to a tax deferment of a new construction project that's in a tax deferral um, district? Is that the same way it works? Not, not really. No, no because uh, tax deferral, when well, it's a tax stabilization, they pay the school portion. And everybody else does pay the school portion. So we just wanted to be certain that who, you know, they could go to the Board of Abatement for certain. That's what we did last year. They went to the Board of Abatement, and the Board of Abatement did abate it. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know, you know, what all the other legalities are myself. Can the select board do this, or does it have to go to the board of abatement? What are we talking about here, Tim? Uh, in terms of money? Yes, in terms of uh, yeah. the, the school the school portion. For the school portion for this uh, current tax year is uh, $5,700 as billed. And 
how's your how's your usage doing? Well, it's come up some since last year when we, you yeah. know, you were there at the abatement yeah. hearing. Um, but we're still by no means, you know, have everything going that we had before the pandemic. But uh, we, you know, we we thought when we were asking for this exemption that we had made it clear that we were looking for full tax exemption, which means to us exemption from both parts. Uh, last year in 2021, the board uh, chose to change our article so that it, it was only asking for abatement or for uh, exemption from the municipal tax. So that's why we changed the wording this time. Thought that we had that covered. And how are you, um, how is the Berlin usage doing? Well, we are back up to at least two times per month, which is the minimum that we put yeah. there, which has been the case, at, as I think you know, since we started that in 2016, except for during the COVID times, I won't say yeah. that. <laughs> we didn't have much going on then. I know Weston's co-op uses it twice a month for their board meetings and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah, but beyond that, there are many uses besides that. Too. I'm just saying, I know right. those. Yeah. Twice yeah. a month, it's used yeah. just for their board meetings. Do you have any contingencies where a Berlin resident wouldn't be able to utilize it? Is that perhaps based on if there's not enough um, availability at that time? Yes, if, if someone else has already reserved the hall, then we have to figure out a different time that the Berlin resident could use it. But that's just a pre, if there's a pre-existing reservation. Okay. Thank you. Any other on this? Hear a motion? So last year they went to the Board of Abatement to do the thing. My feelings is probably that's where it should go. Board of Abatement. Yeah, I'm not I'm not at a point of wanting to make a um, motion, motion yeah. at this time. I think it should go through the Board of Abatement. When uh, you know when they're gonna meet next? No, yeah, because we, their town clerk is new, so she's the one that's gonna have to be in Set charge it up. of that. Yeah, I can help her set it up, but I don't know when she'll have to, you know, when she'll set it up. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be good practice for her. Mm -hmm. I guess I can help her with that. Um, motion to send this to the Board of Abatement? I'd make a motion to have them go to the Board of Abatement uh, for this school portion. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Tim, get a hold of uh, the town clerk. Yes, I am. And set it up. Do that. I'm just, I just feel like the, no, the, the wording was changed without our knowledge or yeah. any chance to discuss it. And yes. Uh, I'm the treasurer for yeah. Capital City yes. Grange, and I'm also the rental agent, so I can answer questions about who's renting, kind of from memory. Otherwise, you can go to the website and look. My name's Mary Charnock. And I, I just wanted to say that I was part of the decision in 2016 to make it, uh, and then that's when it was a full, and then the board changed so that it was only for the town tax. So when we had that happen, what does full mean? Town tax means town tax, and full means also town tax, mm -hmm. it means full, all things. And so that's why we wrote it that way. Yeah. And it passed four to one. Yeah. Town people knew they were going to have to pay a little more was for, that, the, for their taxes for this. Was that how it was read in the article? It does say full in the article. It says full. Yes. Does it say full property tax? So no, it's, it's, actually, uh, it's actually in this, in here as well. It, it was uh, in the 2021 annual report, it said for Article 4, shall the town grant a continuation of the full property tax exemption for a period of one year 
to the Capital City Grange number 469 property located at 6612 Vermont Route 12 in exchange for free use of the property by residents a minimum of two times a month pursuant to 32 BSA section 3840. See, I mean, the, what you just read to me says for the property tax and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm a little ignorant in this, so does that mean property tax or is, is when these bills come out, is it municipal tax and property tax? How, how is that? It's usually property and education. Yes. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. I mean, in the article, what you just read to me said full property tax. And a continuation of. thereof. Right. So From the year before, though, but the year before was just that piece, so that's where it's when very it was, confusing. Right. When it was specified as right. municipal tax, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's very, it is confusing. From the year before, it was municipal tax, the full property tax and municipal yeah, tax municipal. portion. It was just yeah. a municipal portion. Just a municipal portion. And then they went to the Board of Abatement and got the And school. got the property tax done. And the school Got portion. the school part done, yeah. I guess I'm still not comfortable. <laughs> From what I'm hearing and not knowing legally, what, how we stand on that. So again, I, I think it's just confusion in the wording all around, to be quite frank. Um, and I think if they went to the Board of Abatement, right, and they got it, um, it, it shouldn't be an issue to go to the Board of Abatement again and, and repeat the process. Um, my only thing would be to limit it, again, we'll have a, the same clerk next year hopefully as we do this year there shouldn't be any confusion should they apply next year i think the understanding will be clear at that point that it will be property and educational tax and we can make sure the wording is is clear to prevent any further confusion going forward after that well i I'm, I'm, i had no idea that property tax only applied to one part of the check that i pay for my property and yeah see i anybody else this is yeah, I feel the same way, and I just want to say I'm in full support of the Grange because you guys do a good job. So I just, I just, me being comfortable with it, I couldn't make a motion based on what I'm hearing and not knowing that. I think it just adds a little of your time just to get the, the Board of Abatement to probably work with you. I, I hope that that will, I, I, we're certainly willing to go to the Board of Abatement rather than, you know, have to pull this out of our very small treasury. This yeah. is. Well, large amount of money. Speaking of the treasury, today is the day that the tax the is first, due. The first installment. So do you want the payment now? Because Yeah, it should be now. It yeah. should be yeah. so that you don't that We brought the incur. checkbook along mm -hmm. because we don't want, we're, we're not looking to pay penalty. You know, right. Pay but, penalty right. or anything. And we wouldn't we're want trying you to have to with... pay a penalty either. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, while we are here i want to drop off some posters for uh, a concert that we're hosting for the town of berlin and the grange this sunday this is david Feuerzeit's uh, play every town tour and uh we offer the use of our our hall which has a quite a nice piano got it tuned and everything that's a free concert at four o'clock with a, uh, a potluck dinner to follow i'd be happy to leave one of the, leave both of these here if it could be put up on the bulletin board or whatever. Yes, I think that would be wonderful. Great. Yep. Thank you so much. We'll pass it around. Everyone yes. can see it now. Yeah. And then Vince can put it up. Thank Good. you. Okay, I guess that we are basically done, Mary. We'll bring a check in in just a minute. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I would just like to say that, uh, just ask, if we put in the, an article next year for exemption from school and uh, municipal taxes is that clear enough oh yeah that okay yeah if we had known that we would have put it that way and when you uh, when you submit your article taking uh, run it by events first sure and then sure can... okay well thank, thank you, you for uh, thanks for your time but we're not done thank yet you. oh okay all those in favor oh aye, aye. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> Did not mean to That's all right. get in the way of democracy. Uh -huh. That's, uh, Motion carries. Okay. Have you finished your uh, public comment section? Because I, I was here for that. No. Okay. Let it roll, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Dexter Lefebvre. I'm running for state senate for the Washington 1 district, which is all of Washington County, plus three new towns of Stowe, um, Braintree, and Orange. So I wanted to come here and introduce myself to the select board. Um, I've been nominated by both the Republican Party 
uh, by committee and also by the Libertarian Party as committee. Um, so I'm running, I think number one priority will be, you know, affordability to make Vermont an easier place for people to survive at the lower ends of the income spectrum, you know, especially young people and older people. Uh, it's hard for people on fixed incomes and the elderly to afford to stay here. And it's hard for young people on small, young incomes to get a start here. So if we can make the state more affordable, I think that they would benefit as well as other people in low income categories. Um, another one of my priorities is um, just to make sensible policies. I think that we're seeing a lot of policies in place, you know, with, uh, you know, practically 20 years of Democratic Party control of the House and the Senate. We've seen a lot of policies, especially around things like climate change, health care, and education that just aren't sensible. So I would like to be a voice for sensibility in some of the policies moving forward. We might have some backtracking to do to, uh, to get there. And I just want to point out that, you know, I don't belong to either of those parties. So I'm sort of a non-partisan, independent type candidate. So I hope to build bridges and build relationships that work uh, in Montpelier, something that's really needed uh, in these times. So, and I'd be happy to hear about what you think some of the priorities ought to be for the legislature to make your lives easier and make life in the town of Berlin better, because I think that we can all do better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vince, I'm a little confused here on uh, my agenda. It says site visit Dodge Farm reconvene uh, town office, but on the Dodge Farm uh, site review it says decision of town taking over road. So I think we'll backtrack to that. Okay. Okay. That was put in there, you know, the decision statement was put in there in case the walkthrough went in a in a manner to convince the board yeah him, so well let's take and hear what the, the views of the board on this well i'm no expert but uh it certainly seems like uh, there's there's some uh, potential drainage issues that uh that may prevent the road from being up to town standards at this point. That seems pretty close, but, uh, and certainly a lot of effort has been put into uh, trying to get it there, but, and I wasn't on the board last year, so I don't know exactly how the agreement was worded, but it seems like it was supposed to meet town standard before it was accepted as uh, up for the town to take it over. That said, uh, um, it also seems like uh, from the history of, of other developments or other um, subdivisions uh, that typically the town took them over once they were paved or as a condition of the town taking over. So I'm not sure. Again, I wasn't here last year, so I could be easily influenced by somebody who was that knew better the agreement or the uh, the decision that was made by the previous board that probably researched it and discussed it a lot more than I did. Okay, uh, Dave? Well, I'm gonna say that I was the one that made the motion last year to adopt the Dodge Farm uh, after a discussion about bringing the road up to the town standards and being a little ignorant and not going up and walking the thing. Since I've walked it and, and, and currently being up there on a daily basis, I've seen a lot of what I feel are issues that need to be corrected. Uh, and then talking about these other subdivisions in the, uh, the town, which I kind of feel s set a precedence back in, you know, 87, and I think the other one was 92 or something like that, of these subdivisions that it was required that they be paid before that the town took them over. I just see a lot, the impact on the road crew having to, to uh, to keep them roads good up there, you know, with mowing, keeping the culverts clean, grading, where I feel part of that road is a good solid base, but I don't think there's anything up there really to grade at this point. So uh, that's that's what I think about it. So. Joe? Well, I think uh, 
I think the surface course, the top coat, is probably a little on the thin side, and some of that was looked to be very uh, suitable for a top coat. And that very upper part, of course, was uh, something that needs to be addressed, it needs to be covered up. Um, the drainage, uh, I guess I'm not uh, overly excited about the 90 degree uh, culverts. They're running straight across 90 degrees of the road. Uh, I think they're going to they're going to lose a lot or miss a lot of the runoff. And uh, I think it's that middle section where we have multiple driveway culverts. You're going to have a, quite a velocity of, of water flow down through. And I think if, once it jumps out of that ditch, I think you're going to have you could have some issues to that. Um, so. What were your observations? I concur with everything that's been said. Um, that was the first time that I'd been up there was tonight. And I was also at the meeting in January and I seconded uh, Dave's motion. Um, I do agree with the road being brought to town standards. And like I said, with everything that's already been said, my concern is you want it to be safe. But I also feel like what Dave said in terms of there really isn't anything, in my opinion, that needs to be graded at this juncture, or what I perceive. Um, I'm open to conversation further about it, but um, that's that's it for right now. The only thing I noticed was the the well, I know a lot of things, but um, the the ditches were fairly shallow along the road. And the only thing I could think of is when the snow goes in there in the winter from the plows and packs and freezes. When the water does start to run, the ditches aren't deep enough to keep it in the ditch. It's gonna come out somewhere. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna flow. It will have a chance to get to the culvert before it crosses, either crosses the road or runs down it. Um, that being said, the uh, The amount of work that was done there and the hard, the, uh, the way the road was laid out or the way the, the, the final product that we saw, the top coat, I thought was pretty good. I mean, it was hard, it mm -hmm. was, wasn't crumbly or, any, or, or had a lot of round stone in it. Um, you have anything to add to this, Tim? You know what I mean? You guys have covered it, the drainage issues, you know what I mean? But like, me and Joe found pipe the, the the inlet is completely buried. Yeah. The, the, we, we yeah. for. <laughs> the bottom of it is the bottom of it was cleaned and shoveled out, but the pipe is completely full of gravel, and the head of it is covered right over and bypassed right by, right past. So the culvert is the cross pipe is just sitting in the road, not doing anything. There, there's no way for water to get to it. Yeah. Is one thing we found tonight. And then, you know, like we discussed up on the top, there's there's no top coat to, you know, I mean, it's fairly sizable stone in that up calder sack and out through there. You know what I mean? It can be graded because you can grade three inch dense grade, but okay. it's going to pop tires or it's going to be like driving on a cobblestone road past that point. And then, you know, I mean, like Dave said, all the all the previous developments have been paved before the town has taken them over. It cuts down on the longevity of the maintenance to the, the highway department. As far as you know, if it's paved, we we plow, we salt it. It's open, and you get minimum runoff. As far as like sand and dirt and the ditches doesn't the ditches you cut back on your ditching considerably because you you don't have the material filling in the the ditches culverts don't get filled as quick they can grass in and and it does its natural thing the, the grass slows the water creates less erosion and it absorb you know i mean grass will absorb some of the water it'll keep things dry but you know, 
From my understanding of this right now, we still are required under the agreement for the easement to the water waterworks way is we plow and salt up there anyways. We plow and sand now uh, mm -hmm. with the agreement for our access to the well field. A motion on the town taking over the road. I'd make a motion that we continue with the agreement that is currently in place uh, at this time and not take the take them over as town roads. Second. Second. Oh. Okay. Even Stephen. Any further discussion, uh, Tim? Uh, any ideas on on? Uh, Corrective measures up there that are going to break the bank. You hear me? Good question. Some more top drafts in certain places. You know what I mean? Like Joe said, or you said, the ditches really aren't deep enough compared to like you go look at our gravel roads. Our ditches are, <laughs> you know, three feet, Size two one. two feet deep because we we don't. We got 60 miles or roughly right around 60 miles of road that we have to maintain now. And we've had a fairly productive year. We don't measure it per se, but you know, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing we're probably close to 10 to 15 miles worth of ditching this year. You know what I mean? So, and that's only, And that's not complete ditching. Some of it is just towing the edges and, and making ditches with greater and picking it up like that also. But, um, I mean, it takes a while. And we got to make them deep enough so we don't have to go back in two years because they're full and running back out in the road and scaring the road. And then we start getting in towards our storm water runoff program of the, so, the so. erosion. So out of respect for the folks that live up there, I, I think it would be good for us to make a uh, concrete definitive list of what specifically needs to be done. And if it is done, uh, then then the board would agree. Uh, so, so my I, question I that's, for that is, is um, to make a list as it would be done as if we went and did it. Well, we think the list would have to be you, so you that the I, road you would get be. what I'm saying though, yeah. is it, well, it well, to be to what we would normally, like if we were to go up there tomorrow and, and ditch the road and and gravel it. To meet town crown it yeah. To what we right. maintain our roads at, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody has their own standards and on paper, and you know, I mean, so is that what you're asking for us to do is to put a list together on how we would go and do the work ourselves? Yeah, I would think. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Joe. Well, you're talking about the ditches not being deep enough, but you can't go any deeper than what the culverts allow. Yes. So, or the ledge, <laughs> or the ledge. Ledge, correct. We run into that daily. You know what I mean? Right. So in some cases, you won't have that two foot ditch. You're right. You're, that's 100% um, correct. You know what I mean? You're only, we run into, you know I mean, we were ditching over on Chase Road today. There's multiple places where I was hitting ledge. You know what I mean? We, you're getting close to 18 inches still, but, you know, we shoot for the 20 to two foot. You know what I mean? Because most of our pipes now, or 18 inch, try to get at least two feet ish worth of cover over the top of them. So your, your bottom of your pipes are three, between three and four foot. Anyway, so that's where we get our depth from. It so also helps with the depth on that, not to, for just different perspective. Is the depth of it also helps us with frozen pipes. You get a little bit of ground warmth out of that. It's, some of the reason why we so that one plugged culvert should be clear yeah you know what i mean they did straight past that one that one should be found 
wherever the head of it is, and, yeah. and it would have to be a berm would have to be reinstalled so the water don't flow right past. Yeah, I mean, the water now is just flowing right past it. It's and then it's got to be completely cleaned out. Mm -hmm. Which it looked like it was just full of sand. Didn't look like gravel. And in the minutes of the Monday, January 17th meeting, prior to the motion, it does say the road will need to be brought up to town standards with a transition apron from the paved road of approximately 40 to 50 feet. No, I think it's what, 75? I think now it's 75, correct? I thought the town standard referred to A76, mm -hmm. the highway standard A76. I'm positive they won't show three and four foot ditches on A76. Mm -hmm. I, I would ask, um, you, you've you been plowing that for 10 years, I guess. Me? Somebody has. <laughs> yeah. How did, how did the water come down the, the hill last year without doing the ditching that we did? Was that a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's icy. You know what I mean? It was flowing in the road. Yeah. So you don't think that the ditches that we created are going to keep that from happening? When it would cut back done? on it. When when was it Brad said? It's been done for two months. Okay. You mean like Brad said? It's the snow packs, and then we deal with it all the time in the springtime where we don't have. Well, some of the places we're ditching now. Is, is well, it, the road doesn't didn't look. I I wasn't here in the spring, but when I did get here, the road didn't look like uh, a river had come down the center of it from the sides of the road. Uh, in a pretty dry spring <clears throat> this year, I think. Comparatively, sure yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd like to speak a little bit more to this sure. before you mm -hmm. close this out. Um, the idea of paving that road, we went uh, with the premonition that you folks had grandfathered us not to pave it. That is why we put the $40,000 into the roadway, thinking that we did not have to pave it. And I think if you go back, I wasn't here. That was a Roberta deal with the Board of Selectmen <coughs> two years ago, perhaps. Um, so I, I don't, you know, we embarked with that thought process that if we <coughs> beefed it up to town standards without pavement, that the town would take it over. So the way the motion was uh, made and, and approved on uh, January 17th was uh, motion was made by Mr. Sawyer to adopt the Dodge Farm Road as long as the road is brought to town standards and includes a paved transition apron of 50 feet. Seconded by Ms. Smith uh, and the motion passed. Okay, so the idea of having to pave it should not be in question at this point in time. So the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> the other point I, I'm you know, deeply disturbed because um, we met with Tim, the contractor and I met with Tim and we went through the list that was provided by the, by the town as to what was needed on that roadway. Um, we walked that road and determined what needed to be done. And as far as I can see, I believe it was done according to that conversation. Also in that conversation, I invited Tim to come along any time because we wanted to do this one time, didn't want any surprises at the end. I don't know if you remember me saying that. Tim. So Tim's been there several times. Certainly been there since we put that cobblestone, you're calling it, on the top end. That was there over two months ago. You know, it's it's um, it's disturbing to come down here and find that something that was okay then is not okay today. I have a letter from a contractor saying that he talked with you and everything was great, except for those two trees which we cut and the apron which we paved. Um, 
I guess that's my story. Uh, hmm. I can't do any more than that. Well, I can add to that. Sure. So yeah, I made it up there once during that whole process because they were there for two weeks and I was also a man short. So it's not like I have a lot of free time to still get to visit stuff like this. Not that I don't want to because I want to, but I can't be everywhere at once. Also, if you remember, I had asked for extra ditching in between driveways and I was confronted with it's already grassed in we really don't feel like we need to do that and I said I I stressed my concerns that I did believe that that should be done and then again at the bottom where we looked at the scouring in the S corners you know I asked for the berm to be removed for the water to bleed off slowly and not be collected and that berm is still there and the water is still flowing down the side of the road until it finds a spot to get off. And my answer to that is we've had hellish storms here in the last two months. You've got hardly any wash. And that road's a, a great road, I think. But, um, I said my piece. We, like we discussed up there, <clears throat> minimum traffic, that road was rolled and chlorided and compacted. We don't have a roller to compact it. It, it will be loose gravel when we grade it. And due to the fact that it's low traffic, the cars really only travel in the center of that road versus like Chandler Road or Crosstown Road where they use two lanes. So your sides don't get the, the traffic to compact the gravel down. That's why you have grass coming up through, you know, shoulder area. <clears throat> so just to try to move this forward because we're we're getting into the yeah. into the details a little bit. Back to your point, Carl, right? Uh, with regards to the document for the town standards, but we had that. This clearly, def I mean, we approved it uh, last year, right? As, as clearly being the defining factor for the town standards. You don't have the full report in there, but uh, we have it here. So it's clear um, of what, in my opinion, it's clear of what needs to be done and the standards that it needs to meet are in here. It does refer to the state standards in here as well. The law standards and what they need to be. It also breaks it down. It talks about the culverts and, and it talks specifically about acceptance as well. So when the board does, and I'll, I'll read section 12, it, and it's when the road has been completed and inspected, the town may begin normal maintenance for 12 months. After 12 months of maintenance, if no serious defects have been observed, the deed will be recorded and the road will then become a town highway in accordance with the provisions of 19 BSA chapter 7. During the 12 month initial acceptance period, any flaws or defects which are pointed out to the developer or owner will be their responsibility to correct. During this period, the town will order and erect the necessary signs, right? So again, um, when the board is ready or the highway superintendent is ready to accept it, it still goes through a year period, right? So all the seasons are covered, any defects that show up, there's the ability to identify them and correct them during that period as well. Um, also for the inspection process, just to be clear, so there's no surprises down the road either in this. Uh, let me find it, I just saw it in the inspection process here. Uh, it talks about perhaps doing uh, the town before, it's right here, the town in section 10, before final inspection, before final acceptance, may take inspections, samples, and or core tests, and the developer uh, shall reimburse all costs incurred uh, for that. It doesn't say they have to, but it's it's in there to cover that as well, right? So again, I think this is pretty clear. It's been out there from the beginning of this process. Um, and to your point, Carl, I think this covers it. Um, so if there are things, we just need to communicate them and highlight them um, once they're addressed. And then we come back to the board if the board chooses to accept it at that point, it still goes through another year where we maintain the road and identify any defects that have to be still a responsibility of the owner to take care of. I just want to be clear on that because um, I don't want to reinvent the wheel on this. We've been we've been doing this now for close Two to years. close to a year at least. We're anyway, since, yeah. since we rolled this out, so I, I think it's here. We just need to accept that that's what we're following and. 
at this time, I don't think it's up to those standards. That's my personal feelings. I haven't read through those 100%. I don't feel it's up to a standard that we should be accepting the roads at this point. And the motion I made, I feel stand. And I think it was one of the most recent meetings that Roberta Haskins attended as well, where we talked about the 12 months. And Roberta, I won't quote her, but there was some conversation regarding the 12 months and maybe waiting the 12 months if this was, uh, you know, may come to pass in terms of what other things are found or considered to be a flaw within that time period. And um, like Dave said, I stand with the motion that we made in January at this juncture. Anything else on this? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. I can expect a list at some point in time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank yes. you, Ray. Thank you. I appreciate you. When you get your list up, I'd like to see it too. Yep. Same. Yep. Uh, well, I'll do the same as I did before. We'll do a summary report to the board for approval. Once the board approves it, then it'll go to uh, the uh, the owners. Yeah. Excellent. Once it's gone through Tim and, and the board. Thank you, Vince. Okay, uh, Cornerstone Catering request approval. Yep. There's a copy of it, should be a copy of the uh, request in the packet. They're basically having a uh, company employee party where they're serving beer and wine in the parking lot at Northfield Savings Bank over here on Thursday. Of, uh, that's why it's an urgent one. It's this Thursday, the 18th. It has to be approved um, by the board for the clerk to sign off on it and for the state to uh, issue it as well. I make the motion to approve the request to cater malt, vineyards, and other spirituous liquors. It's from Cornerstone Burger Company. The event is this Thursday, August 18th, 2022. And uh, it's 5 to 8 p.m. and the approximate persons expended, expected, I should say, is 100 to 150. What's the location of this? Yeah, the physical address is... Uh, 1021 Payne Turnpike right. North yep. at the corporate office. At the corporate office. Mm -hmm. Corner of Stewart and Payne Turnpike North. Mm -hmm. And do, with this event, the chief and has been notified and so uh, I don't think I've sent him this yet. I wanted to bring it to the board first, but he'll have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. I'd second that motion. Any other discussion? Vince, at some point, didn't the board shift all of these over to the town clerk? For? I think, um, um, uh, well, I'm trying to think. I seem to recall there was a discussion that this would be something rather than us making these approvals. Just to streamline it, the mm -hmm. town the town clerk would do it. Okay. I think um, I think Mr. Quinn did that one. I must have missed it or blanked it out because. But. I will, uh, I'll validate that, and if that's the case. Well, we'll take and pass this motion anyway, right. so. It, it, and the thing with these is there's something that, when these get approved, that, you know, like the chief, they, they do get this, and because five to eight at that, that location there, they, they're notified in advance before we do it, right? Yeah. Right. Any other discussion on this? The only thing I was going to ask is do they have their own insurance and all of that? Because I didn't see anything on this that indicated insurance. Of course, no one does that. Okay. They okay. probably carry a liquor liability. Excellent. Yeah. Very well. But you can check up on that too, then. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, sign purchase and installation approval request or for around the pond. What's that one about? Tim's favorite. So 
we got another request. There's a copy of this in your package that uh, a few of the residents uh, around the pond have asked for some additional signage. We, we put up the uh, speed limit signs, so those are, those are done, uh, but they're looking for some additional signage now. Are they, what are they looking for? Have that put underneath the speed limit? Yeah, I think it. it whatever, the same post? whatever Tim's good judgment is, where they need to be, they're willing to. Um, but yeah, using the same sign posts is what I would recommend as well, not asking for additional. And how much is this going to be? Uh, I think the quote that I saw on this was roughly 35 bucks a sign. And how many signs are we talking? Depends who you ask, huh, Tim? <laughs> What's your estimate? Somewhere between six and eight. Yeah, I was going to say eight. Eight. If we put them at all speed limit signs. Your motion on this? Move to accept the sign purchase for the caution signs around Berlin Pond. Here, second. I guess I'll second it for conversation. Do you really think this is going to make any difference? No. no. I'm a huge proponent of safety, but I think that that's excessive, and I think it's a given um, that folks should be safe around Berlin Pond for all of those reasons. I wouldn't be opposed to one or two, but not ten. I'd be in favor of one at each end of mm -hmm. the, the walk, you know, the main travel area. Correct. We can get away with four, right? I even think four is excessive. I think well, it's you got what? You have one there at the. Uh, you turn right on Brookville Road. Yep. We turn on left the, on Mirror Lake Road. Yep. Turn right on Mirror Lake Road. Yeah, right on Mirror Lake Road. And then one at, if you go straight past Brookville Road. I don't really believe they're going to do much good, well, that's, but that's just my opinion. No, that's, there's that's, been studies put out now that there's over abundance of signs and people don't pay attention. Distraction, and they you know, know, pay attention to we, we use a 36 by 36 orange fluorescent sign, and I've been told that I didn't see them. Who's the right? You look in your side mirror, <laughs> it's 100 feet behind you. Was there, a it. was there a reason or an individual that was very motivated to put the sign up? Yes. Phil, Phil Gentelli. He's made comments about the speed down through there. Yeah. He's, he's come to the board before as well. He's, he's Has there been summer. an accident out there? Well, last, su John. last summer, again, at Phil's place, he put out a caution children at play. Okay. Right? Cause they crossed the road to his property there as well. And, um, some uh, some lady in a car ran over the sign, dragged it down the road. When it came out from underneath their car, the pickup truck behind it ran over it as well. Okay, but there hasn't been and children, joggers, bicyclists, or pedestrians injured. As, as, as accidents, no, none that have been reported. Did the, have you found out what the, those uh, radar signs cost? I haven't yet. With the speed, the solar? Yeah, like the one you, Saw on the way to, yeah. yeah. But I mean, they have well, a, they have those small the little ones. one. They've had one up here on Crosstown, just past yeah, the painter by itself. And look, you don't know what those cost. Um, this is just shoot from the hip because I think I heard it was somewhere around three thousand. I was going to say pricing. the upper part of fifteen hundred a piece yeah, or better. They're pricey. Yeah. Well, and I'm good. sure it's dependent on what you get is yeah. what you pay for. You know what I mean? You can get a cheap one that might last a day, and you get ones that are solar powered that are. I think some of these are 
battery operated of some sort. You do catch your attention because you're coming up at the speed and you see them start flashing and it catches your attention. Yeah. I personally don't believe these will do that good, but like I said, I'd be in favor of a couple of them. I think you're on the edge of over signage and taking away the natural beauty, but if that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> All, any other discussion on this? All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Aye. 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 Motion's defeated. Uh, let's see here. Approval of license permits, vouchers, uh, and applications. Before we go on to that, I'd just like yep. to remind you of the uh, additional items. The, of what? The additional. Uh, Letter of support for Midway Solar. Midway Solar. Yes, and there is a copy of the uh, of the letter in your in your package as well. Okay. Um, anybody that is not familiar with it, you got a copy of the whole the whole plan here. That he wants to take a look at it. It's up off Midway Avenue, up behind the Price Chopper. Not Price Chopper. Uh, yeah, Bowling Alley. Yeah, Bowling Alley. Yeah, Bowling Alley. Price Chopper. It's Bowling Price Chopper. Yeah. yeah. How many kilowatts that? I have to look again. It's a, it's a good size. Uh, Huge field. Project. Is it visible from 302? No. No. It's going to be hidden back in there. Yeah, you won't be able to see, see, see that. But the only you're going to see it is from the air. One of the, uh, uh, one of the owners was, uh, was here, but he must have left. It's on the stand. He's my solar. And they're just looking for a letter of support? Yeah, he's just looking for a letter of support. Yeah, it's very short. Here, a motion? I'd make a motion to uh, be in support of the Midway solar project. I second. Any further discussion? Uh, that has no conflict with any of our uh, zoning in that district? No. Uh, the only request that's been made is uh, for the, during the, at the end of the construction, that they ensure that uh, Vine Street is returned to its return to it as good or better condition. Vine Street or Vine Street, Midway. Vine Street. So they're going to well, from they're going to yeah. access from that side. And they've agreed. So. Yeah, I just read that. Uh, Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Yeah, I'll sign the letter. And branding of the town center. Uh, that's just to uh, set a date with the with the planning committee. So um, I will I will pick a couple of dates, send it to the board. Um, let me know if you're willing and able to attend any of those dates and times, and I'll coordinate that meeting and, and get it set up and scheduled. But it'll be within the next probably. Probably within, it'll be before the next select board meeting, so within the next two weeks. Okay. They want to have that. They'd like to sit with you, sit with the board. Okay, and once again, approval of licenses, <laughs> permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-04 for payroll from July 31st, 2022 to August 13th of this year to be paid on August 17th in the amount of $44,782.66. Also payable warrant 23-G04 with checks 22193 to 22253 for payables in the amount of $67,892.10. July journal, general journal entries reconciled July bank statements for the general fund and sewer water checking account. Second that. All those, any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table, Carl? Uh, just a quick question. Uh, tomorrow is Board of Abatement meeting, is it? Right. And that's 6 p.m. here? 6 p.m., okay. yes. I wanted to confirm that. Oh, no, that's the BCA meeting. BCA. Yeah, what? it's different. What's the BCA? Okay, the BCA is Board of Civil Authority. 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 All right, yes, okay. I hate acronyms until I learn them, then I like them. Yeah. <laughs> Dave? I'm just wondering where we're at on that uh, sewer project that we talked about down off the 302. Do we get any more information on that? The Where that was left off was with the um, public works to generate a letter to the residents. Has any of that happened? Or? I haven't heard anything yet about a letter going out. I can validate that with Tom, but I don't believe a letter has been written and gone out to the residents yet. Because we saw that one landowner has got a piece of property there, a house with Yep. Not anything happening. Yep, exactly. That was the next step. And we move forward from there. Hello? I just wanted to mention a couple of things. The Riverton Bridge, I wondered if there's an update to that. And I also wanted to add that a few people have mentioned to me for safety purposes, maybe something could be done for people coming off Crosstown and then going right. That they've seen people who just immediately make a right and they're not paying attention whether anyone's coming down the hill from the Riverton, higher Riverton area. Um, so I don't know if you, Tim, have any ideas or thoughts there, but I've had two people mention it to me that they've seen it happen with someone coming the other direction from the fire station. Yeah, I seen it the other day. Get you some. I was coming down so, behind them. Oh. Probably not because I believe that the light placement was placed there to coincide with Crosstown. That's why the stop bar is back behind the guardrail. Mm -hmm. So we have a stop sign. You have to stop the stop sign. Correct. If you're taking a left, you have to make sure there's no traffic coming from the Correct. left. Um, and as far as turning right onto the bridge, that'd be running the red light. Correct. And that's what two observers have mentioned to me is people coming off so, cross town, taking a right with traffic coming um, from the fire station direction. That's, you know, that, that back border lines, the people don't pay attention to signs. And I mean, that's no different than running a red light out here. Right. You're, it's a red light. Mm -hmm. You run it, you run it. Mm -hmm. So for awareness, I wanted to bring that up. There's plenty of awareness down, you know what I mean? They have road work ahead, road work, mm -hmm. one lanes, bridge work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the state put up permanent signs, which makes me believe that that probably is going to be like that for the winter. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Another thing I wanted to bring up is, have you gotten any status update in terms of Lover's Lane Bridge? The only thing the state's telling me right now and the Regional Planning Commission is that it's on the list. It made the list. Mm -hmm. Joe? Um, hey, last Saturday was the, the first open house at the fire department. I want to give a shout out to the Times Argus, Dave Delcor, for the nice write-up for the, uh, I think it was Talk the Town is where I read it. Um, we had many people come through uh, and I think we have maybe two new applicants um, and I think I gave gave Vince um, some quotes for uh, new base station for the EOC these yes and this so be in the package as well if it's not you'll put it in your packet before mm -hmm. I thought we were gonna probably discuss mm -hmm. it next well, we are. I put okay. it on. I put it on for the round table to come up to raise awareness, so we could discuss it at the next meeting. Okay. And so this right here would complement the the town highways radio upgrade as well as um, the PDs upgrade. Because as soon as they put the, their radios in play, now the emergency management cannot talk to those people. They're cut out. Yeah. Anything else, Joe? No. Emergency Operations Center, EOC? Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, the EOC. Yes, Ben. <laughs> it's so painful, isn't it? I'm sorry. Um, Partridge Farm update. Uh, I spoke with uh, Mr. Provo from Partridge Farms Homeowners Association uh, today uh, with regards to that. And he clarified some information for me as well. Uh, they're not really looking at any funding for the project from the town. Uh, they're looking for grant support from the town for us to apply for grants for that, like the one that we talked about for the uh, design phase. Yeah. Uh, so I did speak with him a little bit about that, that there might be a possibility there that we can apply for some grants. Um, so he did clarify that for me. The only portion that we'll be responsible for with the state is it's about, it calculates to a little over two acres of, of road surface. So that's there. under the three acre permeable surface. Well, it's, it's all rolled into that they whole 10 acre permit line. though. It's part okay. of that whole permit. Okay. So uh, that, that's my update for that. Um, I'll have some grant um, information hopefully uh, for the next agenda for the board meeting. Okay. Oh, I do have one more. Of course you do. <laughs> of course I do. We have no doubt. Uh, I'm sure this will be happy for you guys to sign. This is for the appointment for our new town clerk, for her appointment. It's, she signed it. She took the oath. Our, our notary, Ms. Diane, uh, so was able to uh, provide the oath. So I just need a board signature on that. and. I, need that back. I think that uh, one on that Partridge Farm, that design grant that they had to the yard, I think that closed. I think, I think they're yeah, awarded. Well, there's, the there's two application periods for that. The second one? Okay. Yeah. So First one, I believe, is closed. Yeah, yeah. There, there's one that's gone by already. Because yeah. they're going to award that one sometime in September, I believe. There's also the. the, the, the there's still one available that I can talk to you, Tom, I believe, that we get 100% funding for. That's not our fund. Okay. Any executive session? No, sir. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.